I have provided you an example essay that I wrote myself um, uh, in order to show you just exactly what I'm looking for in your persuasive essay. So you can see all the different parts. I just want to walk you through this document that I've also provided, which lets you see uh, how I organized my thinking in order to start uh, building towards my persuasive essay. So my idea is that I want to encourage parents to allow their children to read widely and not uh, try to limit what kinds of things uh, they are uh, letting their children uh, read. So even if they don't think that it's you know a super important book or if they think that it might have questionable things in it, they should still allow their their um, their children their teenagers to read it. So. Um, that's my thesis. Acting on the knowledge that the first step in making good readers is getting kids to read entails allowing kids to read whatever they choose. This is my thesis. Notice this doesn't have the word should in it, but it's a should statement. That is, you should let them read whatever they choose. Um, so um, I started with the outline and I started adding in the things that, that I wanted here. So when I said um, hook, I went ahead and added how I'm going to start. Uh, it was a dark and stormy night. Okay, and then my background, I've noted that I want to note it, I want to start historically um, from Jane Austen to today. People have disparaged the influence of low quality books. I need to provide a definition of the word that I'm using, which is trashy, um, and then say, paradoxically, everybody praises Harry Potter. So, so this is how I'm getting from my hook to my thesis is with this background information. My first um, part of this is my scope. I need to know, okay, so the scope of the problem is that millions of adults don't read at all, that there's a lot of books that are banned, and that illiteracy is a problem. This is how big the problem is, and I need to look up information in order to support these things. Um, the best way, to, then, okay, so now I'm, I've moved on to the arguments on my side. My first argument is that the best way to become a good reader and writer is to read in large quantity at a fairly easy level. Um, and I've got my points that I want to support this. Research on reading levels should know 98% of the words. That's a thing that I know off the top of my head, but before I can put it in my essay, I'm going to have to find a source that supports me. Um, writing improves when reading at this level because the brain is free to absorb. Okay, so these are things that I know. I need to find some sources. Here's my next argument in favor of my side. Child development experts lament that young people are not given enough freedom. Okay, again, I need to support this. Who are these child development experts and what do they say exactly? Um, my third point in my favor um, of letting children read widely is that independent reading should be geared towards other types of books, not great literature. Um, and again, this one is not necessarily something that I need to support with um, factual or statistical information, but it is definitely something that I need to support well with good arguments. Um, next, I move on. I need a rebuttal paragraph. My rebuttal paragraph is going, I have, I have several things um, that the opposite is going to say. Critics will say that children, that kids don't like to read, and so we have to make the most of the time with they, that they do spend reading by giving them the best books. Um, and then I'm going to say, that this is wrong. See, it's not so because. All right. Um, so I've chosen that. Not a, I acknowledge that it is true, but my side is more important. Um, kids' morals have to be guided by exposing them to trashy. Uh, sorry, and exposing them to trashy books will corrupt them. Okay. Um, and this is uh, the rebuttal to that. That this complaint also applies to some great works. Um, okay. So I've got my outline for how I'm going to. Um, uh, and here's my conclusion. Let your kid read whatever she wants. Um, and then at the bottom of this, I've already started looking for some information. And I'm, I don't have to start by quoting it exactly right or citing it exactly right. I started by just copy-pasting. Um, this is my relevant um, quote that I want to use, and here is my source. And so now I'm ready to plug this in to the paragraph where I want to use it, and it's still connected to its source. And so when I put this on my work, work cited page, I can go right back to this post and um, figure out how to, um, to cite it correctly using MLA style, because right now I don't know how to use MLA style. Um, I'm going to get to that. Uh, a little bit later. I can start my thinking before I even worry about that. And here I have another one. 
you know, a, a relevant quote and, and its um, source so that when I'm ready to use this in my essay, it's right there.